is another featherweight world title fight where Luis Alberto Lopez of Mexico would fight Abe of Japan here in a fight that he's heavily favored to win, as you see on the Bet US line. Lopez is the champion for the IBF at 126 pounds. He previously, and Dan will elaborate on this, has gone to the UK and won important fights. Now this fight, again, is on this ESPN top-ranked show in upstate New York. Lopez, as you see, by knockout plus 130, interesting, over under 10 and a half rounds. I don't know a lot. I rely on you, on Abe, the, uh, the Japanese fighter that comes in. All right, tell me more about this with Lopez putting his title on the line. Well, this is a this is a mandatory fight. Abe earned that distinction by his victory in his previous fight, where he defeated uh, the well traveled, well worn, uh, but still serviceable opponent Kiko Martinez, who had won titles in you know multiple weight classes, but was at the end of his career and wasn't a total shocker that he won that fight. Uh, Kiko retired after losing to Abe, but that was the fight that earned him uh, this title shot within the uh, IBF. And uh, Lopez, as you, you mentioned, he had fought in the UK. This guy's a road warrior. This guy is not concerned. He'd travel anywhere. So for Abe, he's coming to the United States to fight Lopez. It's his first fight outside of his home country of Japan. Uh, for uh, Lopez, you know, you could put him in Japan. You could put him in Verona, New York, where this fight's taking place. Put him in the UK. He doesn't care. Uh, just to give you an idea, when he before Lopez won the title, he won an elimination fight in the UK against Isaac Lowe on Isaac mm -hmm. Lowe's turf in England. Isaac Lowe is the good friend and and a training mate and, and stable mate of Tyson Fury. Won that fight overseas. Then he went back to the UK to Josh Warrington's hometown of Leeds, England to challenge for the title as the mandatory. He won a majority decision, which really should have been unanimous, but he got the title. For his first offense, there was no celebratory homecoming, no big fight in Mexico or within a big you know, American city with a big Hispanic population. No, he went back to the Lions then. He went to Belfast, Northern Ireland, the hometown of Michael Conlon, and defended the title against Michael and scored an absolutely spectacular uh, knockout. I want to say round yep. five. Looked demolished him. Night. Totally demolished him. Then finally got a chance in his last fight to fight in front of a largely Hispanic crowd uh, you know, in the United States against another Mexican American, a Mexican American fighter, Joette Gonzalez. He won the decision. Didn't look spectacular in that fight, but certainly did enough to defeat uh, Joette Gonzalez, who had challenged for world titles on multiple occasions before that. So that's where he's at. He's had a very successful recent run as a challenger and as a champion. And uh, to me, this is a step down in his competition against Abe. I think the other fighters I have mentioned, whether it's even Joette Gonzalez, certainly Michael Conlon, and without question, Warrington, uh, you know, they seem to me, uh, for a lot of different reasons, to be a greater, a better grade of opponent than Abe, who's traveling a long way. Uh, and, and listen, Lopez, the one, the only thing that gives me pause, I'm, I'm just to cut to the chase here, I'm picking Lopez to win this fight. And I'm also picking him by a knockout, and I'm also taking the under 10 and a half. And, you know, I'm not big on the unders a lot of times in these fights. Right. Uh, but, and, but the one thing that does give me a slight pause is that the one time that uh, that Lopez was defeated pre winning the title. Obviously, he fought Ruben Villa, who is an excellent boxer from Salinas, California. He was also with top rank, uh, really consummate boxer. Was also a top amateur. He lost a decision to him, and he's a southpaw, and Abe's a southpaw also. So that does give me a little pause. I'm if you're if you're in the Lopez camp, you hope that they went to school on on fighting a southpaw because he did not look great against Villa, even though it was a close fight and he lost against the lefty. Now he's taken on a, another lefty. He was also more of a boxer than a brawler, uh, the same sort of a similar way that uh, that Villa was. So that's the one sort of thing that does give me mild concerns, but he's got so much aggression and he does have good punching power. I can't shake their image of that knockout against Conlon that was so spectacular. Uh, that I think that's uh, what we're looking at. We're looking at a, a Lopez defense. We're looking at a knockout. And we're looking at a one that's not going to take more than 10 and a half rounds to get him out of there. All right. Interesting here again, for the reasons you mentioned, Lopez is the favorite. Uh, I, again, I like the knockout with you. I don't have a feel for when it is, uh, when that is going to be happening. So, Let's see. Let's see what happens uh, in this bout. We'll lock us both in on the Luis Alberto Lopez knockout prop. We'll cash plus 130 if that is the case. Again, this is the co-feature fight, top-ranked boxing, ESPN a show, Saturday night uh, in New York, in Verona, New York. You will take the over. You'll lay a little bit there for the over. That It's a late-round knockout no, no. Uh, I took, for this I took matchup. The under. I took the under. You have the under. We'll correct that for the best okay. bets. My mistake there on that. You'll take the under and get a little better play. Let's make sure uh, we get on that, that fix. Rayfield needs the win. 
Rayfield needs an under for this fight. So our mistake there on that graphically, under 10 and a half rounds, that it will come quicker against Abe, the uh, the Japanese fighter who, again, is coming a long way away uh, to be involved in this fight uh, tonight. And again, I suggested this to you previously, but just for the audience, because there's some back and forth right now in the chat about prospects at featherweight. Is it that unrealistic that if they're on the same card that the two winners on Saturday night would end up meeting in a unification fight? Again, call me crazy that that seems logical that you'd have them both in the same building, both in the same ring in consecutive fights, and that the winners might meet down the road. I'm nuts, right, that, to even suggest that, Dan Rayfield. TJ, I mean, you're, you're, you, you, love, you love to just make things so easy. It's boxing. <laughs> Nothing's ever easy. So, right. well, yes, it's certainly plausible that the winners could fight. And when I say that, I mean especially if the fighters that are with the same company are the winners, and that would be Kom Komatov uh, and Lopez, who are both with Top Rank. Abe is with Tekken Promotions in Japan, who does a lot of business with Top Rank, and, and Ray Ford is with Matchroom Boxing, who doesn't do a lot of business with Top Rank. The reason why this fight happened is because Top Rank won a purse bid to uh, gain the rights for the match. So there's that. So if, it's, if it happens to be uh, Ray Ford winning, and it happens to be also Abe winning, I would I would say the chances of a unification fight are like zero, okay. If it's Lopez winning, I'm just <laughs> right. being honest. If it's Lopez winning and it's and it's uh, and it's uh, Lo uh, Lopez and Klomatov winning, it's definitely possible. But you know, knowing the way the top rank does their business, they would probably look to do that fight at some point. But they're not going to do it next, most likely. You never know if the fighters demand it. If suddenly there's you know some kind of real reason to go forward and do so, uh, it would be a little surprising. Uh, but it does create the possibility. Top rank is uh, is not a, averse to matching their top guys against each other. They've been doing it on a regular basis for 60 years. Uh, I just don't think it would be next. And if it's, you know, if it's going to come to pass, uh, you know, Ray Ford with Matchroom, if it happened, you know, they'd have to make some kind of deal. I don't know if they want to send their guy over to the other platform for a fight that's not that big. So, you know, it makes sense intellectually and on paper, but boxing often is not intellectual and it doesn't take place on paper. So, you know, we'll have to see how it plays out. And, you know, you never know if there's a, a great fight and maybe there's a call for a rematch or there's something hugely controversial that would push that off. Plus, you can't uh, forget about the fact that Top Rank is another featherweight title fight that they're going to be doing come this summertime. It's going to be the rematch between Robesy Ramirez, who had that massive upset right. loss to Rafael Espinosa back at the end of last year. Uh, so the winner of that could play into this situation. At the end of the, the light at the end of the tunnel, if you will, it's really about setting up Who's going to be challenge? Who's going to be defending titles when when the main superstar of this of this area of weight classes rises one division, and that is when Noya Inoue, who is currently the undisputed junior featherweight champion, who's got a defense coming up in May, will stay in that weight class. He says for the rest of the year and fight three times. That come 2025, when he rises to featherweight, top rank, who is his co-promoter, will have these different belts all lined up because they will be the promoter of. The IBF champion, if Lopez wins, they are the promoter, obviously, of Komatov. If he wins, they'll have the WBA title in their stable. Mm -hmm. And they're also the promoter of Robesy Ramirez and work with Rafael Espinosa. So they'll be involved with the person who has the WBO title as well. Point is, those belts are going to be there to put in play for big money fights and big events when Inouye goes to featherweight. It ain't that complicated. That's the that's the real ticket here. Now, uh, perhaps they'll winning. be vacation before that. So when Inouye right, right. there. He can win two belts at the same time, perhaps, maybe even three, depending on how it goes, or or maybe you get upset or lose. Who knows? But the point right. is they're keeping these belts available for that in the longer term. World Championship fight, Lopez's belt, he makes the defense. And again, to clarify, Dan is on not only the knockout, but he is on the under, which would cash plus 155, even though you may not see that on the screen right now. Dan taking the under 10 and a half rounds in the co-feature fight Saturday night in New York. Again.